Hey, what's up Saints? God bless you. This is Brian Love has a name YouTube channel and in this video we're going to go through two, maybe even three prophetic words the Lord has spoken to prophetess Donna Rigney. Make sure you check out her website information, ministry information down below in the description and you can support her ministry, follow, watch her videos, follow her on YouTube as I do and so forth. All right. Today is October 30th, 2024. And the first prophetic word we're going to go through today is dated September 25th, 2024. I want to jump right in because we're all so busy and there are probably a lot of videos that you're watching just to keep up to date. I feel you. <laughs> I do the same things. All right. So let me do my best to make it short as long as the Holy, Holy Spirit doesn't want me to stay longer. And if he does, praise the Lord. It's for a purpose. All right. So let's go ahead and pray. Father, Lord Jesus, Holy Spirit, come forth. Let your presence, your anointing, your glory manifest. Let your people be touched. Let them grow. Let them increase. Let them prosper. Let them find your pearls of wisdom through your prophetic words. Let them be encouraged and edified, strengthened and exhorted. In the mighty name of King Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for your servant Trump and your servant Vance. We thank you that your hands are upon them. We agree even now. Keep them under the shelter, under the shadow of your wings. We declare Psalm 91, Psalm 23 over them right now. May they be enveloped. And in this realm, in this dimension of protection. Thank you, Father, for the victory that is ours. Thank you, Father, for victory after victory after victory. Just as you have prophesied to Donna Rigney. We give you all the glory in Jesus' glorious name. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, saints, hit the like for me. Hit that like. And let's get started. First one, subheader. I saw a huge explosive fire. Donna says, on September 25th, 2024, while sitting alone during my prayer time, I looked in the spirit and I saw myself sitting on top of a mountain between Father and Jesus. When I looked below, I saw a huge explosive fire. In parentheses, she has this. This happened about 10 days before Milton hit Florida. All right. <laughs> Next, she says, the father explained, the enemy will attempt to bring great harm and destruction, but my watchmen are diligently at their post. Their prayers and prophetic decrees will stop it before it is launched. When September 11 happened, my church was asleep, but that is not true in this hour. Much destruction and many deaths will be averted because my heavenly hosts have been released at the prayers of the saints. And they will put a stop to this even before it is launched. This includes the attack to assassinate your true and honorable president, D.T. After Father spoke to me about the powerful prayers of his watchmen, I saw the same region with green grass and a large group of people celebrating outdoors. The sky was clear and there was no fire. Let's pause here for a second, saints. Go ahead and put in the comments. Celebration is coming. All right, just go ahead and put that in the comments. And yes, of course, we celebrate every day and in every moment because we rejoice in the Lord, all right? But let's just put that in the comments because we know we're going to have a victory on November 5th. Praise God. Let's continue. The Father explained, your prayers make a tremendous difference. The enemy is trying through his ambassadors to bring some, some of hell to the earth. But my ambassadors are stopping him and his destructive plans from happening. And with their prayers, they are bringing some of what resides in heaven to the earth. 
<laughs> Can I just pause there and point out what God is saying through a prophetic lens? God is saying, with their prayers, meaning the ambassadors of God, okay, that's us, the saints, with our prayers, God is saying, we are bringing some of what resides in heaven to earth. So it makes you wonder about the believers who are so fixated on the rapture is imminent. We got to go. The world is turning to hell. Everything is going evil. These are all the signs that Jesus is coming back. I used to be there until the Lord corrected me. It looks like it's the end. But let me say it for those who may be uh, new, and maybe I haven't said this in the last few uh, or several weeks or a couple months. The signs we see around us that make it appear like the end is near and make it appear like um, the, the, the Armageddon is going to happen and Ezekiel 38 and the Antichrist rising and Jesus coming back. All those signs that we see, let me help you if you are willing to hear. Willing to at least hear the point of view that the Lord has shown me. Those signs, they're there. Those events appear to be happening, okay? But those signs are not from God. What do you mean, Brother Brian? It means this. The devil is the one instigating, pushing, attempting. Do you hear the word? Attempting to, to do what? To force his limited, pathetic time on the earth called the tribulation. The devil is trying hard to bring about that time and that season. Does it not say in Daniel regarding the Antichrist and the spirit of Antichrist that he seeks to change times and seasons? Now, if this is I'm going to use the left hand here. If this is the devil attempting to do this, attempting to change times and seasons, you as a believer and as a Christian, will you say that he has the ultimate power or will you acknowledge that God Almighty is the one who is in charge of times and seasons? You have to choose because if you still insist on what your eyes are seeing and you're walking by sight instead of by faith, and faith needs to be wrapped up in spiritual understanding, revelation. And revelation doesn't come from you dissecting, trying to understand with your own natural mind. No, revelation only comes spiritual, spiritually, because revelation is spiritual. And revelation can only be given by the Holy Spirit, who is a spirit. And everything he gives and says and does is spiritual. So not everything you see, you can you take at face value and say, oh, that means this. In the natural mind, the Bible constantly says that the natural mind cannot understand spiritual things. And that the carnal mind is at enmity with God. Okay, go read Romans 6, Romans 7. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and chapter 2. And it breaks this stuff down. Perhaps you didn't piece it together. Well, this is where the wisdom of God by Holy Spirit, the revelation, the spiritual understanding that I, I'm just putting a voice to it because God has revealed this to me and through others to me. <coughs> so I'm just kind of packaging it in by the grace of God, not because I'm better than anyone, because I'm not. All right. And... I love wisdom and I love understanding and what you love, you engage with, what you seek, you find. But if all you're thinking is it's the end, it's the end, but you're not actually seeking God yourself, then you are likely to think it's the end because you haven't heard from God yourself. You're reliant on your own carnal perspective, lens, understanding of what you see instead of saying, God. This is what I see. This is what do you have to say about it? Now, if you've never done that, perhaps you don't actually believe God can talk to you. 
And with all due respect, don't say, oh, well, brother, the Lord, the scriptures are clear. This is how God speaks. Please just stop. That is the most basic and while fundamental, while foundational, yes, that same scriptures that many religious people will point to, that same scriptures and 66 books of the Bible still talk about Holy Spirit revealing the truth and telling us of things to come and that the Lord uses men and women of God to speak by the Spirit. You see, you cannot deny it, but people will do it because they have no experience with God and they haven't decided that that's a possibility. They're more comfortable in their own intelligence, in their own futile or futile understanding. And therefore, they put up a wall and they block themselves from being able to receive spiritual knowledge, understanding, revelation, wisdom, insight. And this is where God lives, in the Spirit. But so many people want to remain in the natural and in the flesh. So, wow, I've never, I don't think I've ever broken it down in that way. I, Lord, I thank you for this. I think some people out there, this may have helped. And I spoke it in love, though they may be, may be offended. Oh, well, the truth offends those who are unwilling to receive the truth. But if you're willing and you're open like myself, God will teach you a lot of things. And in time, as you grow through revelation, he'll shave off things. He'll form things better. He'll help you understand and see things. Maybe you, maybe you understood better, but not the exact way. Maybe he shows you a higher level truth. Still true, but just a deeper truth. Something that's truer. There are so many levels and layers with God. <clears throat> Praise God. Lord, I thank you for your Holy Spirit. Whew. All right. Let's finish up. I think I'm going to get to only two prophetic words. Nonetheless, that right there is worth a lot in the spirit. All right. Pearls of God's wisdom. So the Lord is talking here. He said, we and with our prayers, we're bringing some of what resides in heaven to the earth. So let's stop, stop trying to escape when God is wanting the kingdom to come down and be established here. If we all are taken, who's going to have the kingdom? The sinners? Does that make any kind of sense? No. <laughs> the Lord continues. Yes, peace, joy, love, and abundant blessings will be pouring forth on the land instead of the destruction that Satan's henchmen were planning on releasing. Days of trouble will be ending, and days of great glory are coming. Praise God. Let's put that in the comments. Days of great glory are coming, not trouble. All right, let's put that. All right, I'm going to scroll down to the next prophetic word, and I like to go in order of dates. All right, and obviously there's so much going on. I, it's rare that I will do a video on a prophetic word that's released the same day. It's rare, one, because I'm only a man. I have no team. I have a full-time job. <laughs> I can't keep up, and the Lord is speaking constantly. I know most of you understand this. Now, we are here at the next subheader, Proving Ground. And it says this. On October 4th, 2024, Father spoke a very profound word to me about our life here on earth. Your lives here on earth are but a whisper of your existence. Forever you will live blessed, healthy, happy, strong, and enduring. Never in eternity will you experience pain or sorrow. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Your time on earth is but a proving ground. Oof, that's confirmation of something I heard Neville Johnson say one time. The earth has just the right elements, just the right experiences and situations and circumstances that can happen to a human being 
created in the image and likeness of God just enough to test them for them to earn their place in the next life in eternity that's just a summary now let's hear because I'm sure the Lord's going to confirm it even more through Donna your time on earth is but a proving ground a time to prove your worth for eternal blessings in my home in heaven all who are faithful will reap an eternity of never-ending rewards for their service oof, for their service and faithful endurance on earth. Rejoice when my children leave their time of testing on earth to receive their eternal rewards. Saints, the Lord just said, an, eternal, an eternity of never-ending rewards. Let's put that in the comments. Heaven will be an eternity of never-ending rewards. Wow. Teach my children to live their lives fully, to the best of their ability, leaning on my Holy Spirit continually. Ooh, I got to pause there again, just for about two sentences here. The Lord is confirming what Holy Spirit flow was just teaching moments ago. Leaning on Holy Spirit, not on self, not on the mind, not on the carnal understanding, not on the intellect, on Holy Spirit. That requires trust. Trust and faith go hand in hand. It almost makes you wonder, are people who are too intelligent or are people who are unwilling to receive Christ because they can only they will only believe on what they can see and they have to understand it and hear if that's what a person is adamant about can they even be saved now I'm gonna answer and say God's grace is sufficient God can still save them in fact you get to a point that someone so intellectual will actually seek for God through science and so forth and they will find oh my god there is in, it is impossible for such grand design to exist without a grand designer hallelujah and i'm going to give you a hint it ain't the universe okay the universe has done nothing and will never do anything for anyone no matter how many new age people want to give credit to the universe that is, I'm just going to tell you, it's stupid. Because the one who created the universe is obviously greater. I choose to worship the creator. And I know you do too. The Lord says, Tell them to live lives of love and not allow bitterness or anger to rob them of their rewards. Guide them to focus on love and on those things that are good, pure, and lovely. See Philippians 4, 8. Not only will my spirit guide you and help you navigate your life so that your eternity will be greatly blessed, but he will help you enjoy your lives on earth. And he will keep you safe. Oof, saints, the Lord just told us he wants us to enjoy our lives on earth. How can you enjoy your life on earth if you're sick? So obviously the Lord wants you healthy. How can you enjoy your life if you have an addiction? Obviously the Lord wants you set free, okay? How can you enjoy your life to the fullest if you're barely making it financially? There is another point and another reason that the Lord does not want you struggling. He wants you excelling. He wants you prospering, even as your soul prospers. First your soul, all right? The Lord says, when your loved ones pass on from earth to their eternal reward in heaven, he will comfort you. Lean fully on him. And the scripture reference here is John 14. Oh, thank you, Lord. All right, saints, that's what I have for you. All right, now. I've already put in the comments the links to the three apps I've been mentioning 
for those of you in America, if you want one, two, or three free apps that will help you to either save some money, earn some gift cards, earn some cash back, just by doing things you are already doing, meaning you don't have to go out of your way. Uh, I'm happy that many of you are already taking advantage of that. It is a blessing. So the links are down there for you. If you prefer step-by-step -step instruction on how to sign up, what to do first, even though it's pretty much self-explanatory, I am okay to help you. Just send me an email and the email information is down below. You are blessed 555 at gmail.com and just let me know in the comments which app you want and I'll send you not only my link, but I will send you my step-by-step -step breakdown, which I typed up. And yes, I took the time to do that for you. All right, that's gonna be in every video going forward until the Lord tells me different. And in time, I'm letting you know in advance, I will be um, sharing as the Lord brings newer opportunities. I will be um, talking about them little by little and mentioning them as well. So you will find resources to help you because not only does God want you to be close to him, he wants you to flourish and be healthy in your soul, okay? Your soul yielding to the spirit, to the spirit of God. This is how your soul will prosper. And he wants you to prosper in all areas of life, in your mental health, in your emotions, in your finances, in your family life, in your relationships, and so forth. And so, if he can use someone to teach you about getting closer to him, and even give you opportunities and ways to excel and become healthier and more whole in other ways, well, I am honored to be able to share little things as I can, all right? I'm just a servant, just like you. And in fact, I'm gonna replace that and say, I am a son of God just like you are a son and daughter of God. So that's what I have for you, saints. Look down below for Donna Rigney's information. Like and subscribe to this video and this channel. Leave a comment, and I'll see you soon in the next video. Bye-bye.